Hi, welcome back to the workshop. Um, although uh, I'm tidying up right now because I've been working on some structures for Beaverbrook, uh, I'm actually going to talk about Gerald Road. Um, when I look back at the uh, at the YouTube channel and I see the, the early videos of Paxton Road, it's quite nice to see how far things have come. So although uh, you'll see in a minute that the layout is far from, uh, well, barely started really. We've got an operational layout. I've been running it to check operation as, as I hoped um, and things work uh, as intended. Uh, but it's a chance to see it and it's in the bare form um, to show you how the thing goes together, sort of the, the bare bones, what's behind uh, some of the scenic work that will follow. And to talk through the, the choice of um, turnout frog polarity and uh, turnout control on there because it's a, it's a new thing for me, a departure from the past. I've generally used wire and tube and kept things dead frog. Um, I've got frog juices on Beaverbrook, but because this is DC, uh, it felt like it needed, and I'm going to be running short wheelbase shunters, it felt like I needed something um, a little bit more considered. And so, yeah, we've gone for a DCC Concepts uh, Cobalt S system. Um, yeah, I think uh, for me, it feels like it was worth the money. I know the people out there who say it's very expensive, £60, although I didn't pay that uh, for two turnouts. Um, that provides you with the turnout control and um, the frog polarity and it also does a bit of auxiliary switching for you as well so and it's really straightforward to wire up and it's taken a lot of pain out of the whole thing for me so um, yeah we're going to have a look at that layout we're going to hopefully give you a bit of a, a demo of things running on it and uh, and talk about what's coming next as well so let's go and take a look so um, you can see the layout sits on my usual Kallax shelf this is where Ponte de Lice used to live uh, Paxton Road's been on this shelf as well, uh, but Paxton Road is now on the shelf above, uh, which actually, to be honest, suits it better. Um, on Gerald Road, I've gone for uh, the tallest uh, viewing window I can fit, and that's because when I'm looking into the layout, you know, it's um, it's obscuring the top of the skyline, yeah, but I'll see more of the, of the layout. And actually, because of the shunting nature and the fact that I need to be able to see where the coupling magnets are and things, um, looking in and slightly down at home, for home use is, is fine. Obviously, if I exhibit this, um, you know, I've, people will be looking in at this sort of level, looking in into the scene. Um, and that really, really then hopefully will pop in terms of the detail and things as we get there. Uh, so what you can see here is the basic box is built. The groundwork inside is painted. The track's laid all wired up. And when you come and have a look inside the case in a minute, you'll see there's no bare wires shown because they're all buried. There's uh, little wires sticking out the front here though and you think what are these well these are my sort of trademark magnet in a box for the uncoupling uh, which we'll talk about in a minute these loose wires hanging out the front are uh, for the led lighting and uh, i'll tidy that up later and round to the end you can see here we've got the usual 12 volt dc laptop power supply uh, the feed for the controller and then this box here which is the uh, the dcc concepts cobalt sorry I said S earlier, it's the Cobalt SS uh, servo uh, controller. And you can see that um, it, it's provided with a series of these green screw terminals and everything basically either clips in using one of their plugs that they provide or you wire the wires into the screw terminals, which means things like um, what it does is it also allows you to do some auxiliary switching, as I said. So what I've got it set up to do is, although it switches the polarity of the frog when you change the uh, turnout, it also isolates the track beyond, so they behave a bit like dead frogs. So I can leave a locomotive in the siding, switch the switch, and it's dead. And on a couple of these where I had the feed wires the wrong way round, dead simple, unscrew the terminals, switch them round, screw them back up. So although I still have to solder all the blooming wires to the track and all the stress of hoping I don't melt the uh, the plastic sleepers um actually when it came to wiring it took a lot of the pain out so i think um worth every penny worth every penny um you'll see on the end of the layout also these two switches here these are the turnout um center off momentary toggles so if i switch up um it sets the direction um a furthest away from me down switches the direction closest to me it makes sense to me and it means that when i'm operating uh, with the hand the controller in one hand i can flick the switches and run the trains um and sort of get lost in the scene without having to worry about buttons on the front. I felt buttons on the front would clutter things up. That's why everything's on the one end. Uh, so now I've talked you through this, I'm going to bring you into the scene. So uh, just bear with. So looking into the scene now, um, 
off towards the lower. Well, let's just pan around slightly, so bear with. Sorry about the camera wobble. You'll start the scene, and um, the locomotive will come in under a overbridge. There'll be some um, semi-detached 1930s housing along the back. Uh, at the front, there's going to be a signature warehouse that actually exists in the real location or just about exists. I think it might have been somewhat gentrified these days. These cars are parked where there'll be a level crossing. You can see the concrete rails here. What I've thought is in real life, some of the line was relayed um, in the 70s for the Avon side. Um, I'm going to call it the wrong thing, but basically the garbage refuse sort of transfer point so i've assumed that that's happened and that's meant the track's been realigned further up the branch so down here there's the level crossing will have two tracks but the, the furthest track away from us is disconnected so you'll see stubs at each end um there'll be a couple of trees sort of here um sort of masking the high the, the sort of move into the uh, scrap yard um along the front so bear with if the camera wobbles again my apologies so then looking down this way so i've held the level crossing in shot still. There'll be a pub here. Um, it isn't in a real location, but I quite like the building. It is from a similar neck of the woods. Um, a small office at the back, some warehouses and low relief here. This is the scrapyard area, a slightly taller uh, building, perhaps warehouse of some description right at the back here. Along the back edge, there'll be uh, a fence and another road uh, with a level crossing where there's a little, well, you can't quite see it in the video, but there'll be a level crossing at the end and the, the track will disappear behind a gate. Um, in real life, the track continued down onto the wharf where the cement terminal was. Um, and then through the cement terminal, you got to the um, to distillers. So what I'm, I've kind of moved everything back on stage. So my cement terminal's here on this front siding. There'll be a, a silo similar to Paxton Road down here. And um, there'll be a series of sort of low relief houses, uh, sort of houses, low relief offices and things here. Uh, one of which will be the Western Fuel Company. Uh, I found a picture of their office in uh, somewhere else in Bristol, but I'm going to sort of transfer it to here. And um, that's a nod to my childhood memories. So the back track will be scrap. The centre track will be to distillers. So the wagons just be left on sage here. And then the front track cement. It's all based 1980 sort of period with the Blue 03. Um, still needing a, a brake van for uh, for propelling. So the trains will be a mix of scrap in 16 tonne and then... Uh, either molasses or cement and uh, the whole purpose is you need to switch what you arrive with with what's there now that sounds dead straightforward but of course the length of the sidings means it's not quite as easy as you'd like um so so there's a bit of sort of built-in frustration but it just means more shunting maneuvers uh so um you know that that's the basic scheme of things what I'm going to do now is I'll move the camera out of the uh, out of the tripod so that I can show you into the scene a little bit more and then we'll get some trains running. And so here you can see uh, the two Cobalt SS turnout motors uh, in little cutouts. Now they're surface mount, but I've lowered them by six mil into the board. Um, and that means the feed from, you know, the, the little uh, wire that drives is in a buried in a wire tube and it comes out to the tie bar here. So I've made my own. Uh, and they, with a bit of tweaking, have worked quite well. What you can't see is, of course, any of the wires, but there's wires, all the wiring is surface because this is a shelf layout and there's nowhere under the board to hide. So all the wires, all the feeds are surface mounted. They've then been um, filled, sanded smooth, and the board's painted ready for the first stage of scenics. Okay. Um, you can see here the British fine scale turnouts, which were a joy to put together. And um, what you can also see is that I've not yet buried the magnets. Now, my intent here is to use a piece of paper just to cover that up. And then um, then I know ballast isn't going to disappear down there. But I also know I'm not going to gum anything up. Um, but the magnets are in a little box. And that when you push this wire in, the magnet's under the track. When you pull the wire towards you, the magnet moves away out in the box to, to the side of the track. So the DG couplings won't move. Uh, and there's obviously one for each siding, plus there's one down here um, if you need it for for getting into the side but the delayed action means theoretically you could just have one um, but that would make shunting slightly more long-winded because every time you want to do a couple you'd have to come back here
So there you go. I uh, hope that was interesting um, and not too dull. Um, just shuffling wagons around takes probably about 20 minutes, uh, which is a lovely amount of time uh, to sort of unwind in the evening. Um, this is going to be a slow build. It's not going to be a typical sort of rush through cameo. Um, I'm going to really look forward to building the structures for this and taking my time, a bit like I have done with Beaverbrook behind me. That's not to say the days of uh, quick cameo boxes is over. Um, just underneath here we've got Wrexham Central which is coming along, Lock Do's over my shoulder and that's nearly done. Um, so I can see a space in my life for both types of layout but um, hopefully showing you the running qualities of N here, the bare bones of the layout at this stage shows just how far things come uh, in, you know, in a matter of months. Um, and uh, hopefully it's giving you a bit of energy to go off and, and do some of your own modelling. So uh, if you've enjoyed this and you haven't done, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe. Um, you'll find more videos on the channel uh, looking at some of the other projects. And of course, I update my blog daily. So that's always a good place to, to find the latest of what's going on. Anyway, uh, until next time, take care. See you again soon.